Welcome to Bike Radar's Tech of the Month, our look at the shiniest, most exciting new kit to have landed on our doorsteps. We're still in some sort of a lockdown here in the UK, so this is coming to you from my garage at home. This month, I'm going to be looking at a very fancy new set of DT Swiss wheels, a new Bontrager mountain bike helmet, the cheapest yet to feature their wave cell safety technology, two new Garmin cycle computers, and the weirdest inner tube you've ever seen. So, let's start with those wheels. This is the DT Swiss PRC 1100 die cut Mon Chasserelle. Bit of a mouthful, I think we can all agree. DT Swiss has used the Mon Chasserelle name before. Originally, it was a skinny, lightweight aluminium design, but it's evolved into this, a carbon rim that's tubeless, built onto DT Swiss's latest super lightweight 180 hubs. Mon Chasserelle wheels have always been about weight, not aerodynamics, and so this is just a 24 mil deep rim. Claimed weight for this set is 1,266 grams, and I can confirm on my kitchen scales, they really are that light. Unlike some of the recent more gravelly wheels we've seen, these have a hooked bead, which means that they can work at really high pressures if you want them to. Hookless rims are generally limited to five bar or 73 PSI, whereas a hooked rim like this can go over 100 PSI with a skinny tire if you really want it to. DT Swiss's hubs have always been prized for their reliability and the 180s, like previous ones, feature a pull-apart design. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate this, which is probably not going to go very well, but this is the rear hub and in theory, if I just do that, that's my free hub off. Now, you can do basic servicing by pulling them apart like this. However, for a full service where you need to remove the ratchet ring inside the hub body, you will need a special tool. So it isn't a totally tool-free experience. However, it is quite cool that you can do this because you can quickly wipe out dirty grease and put fresh stuff in. And if you've done a really wet ride and you think water's got into the hub, it's super, super easy to get inside them. Another DT Swiss trademark is spokes. DT has been making spokes for wheel builders for donkey's years. Uh, these use a proprietary design. I can hear the groans at the back already. However, a cool thing about them is that they do away with one of the key issues that normal straight pull spokes have. So these have what's called a T head, which means that they cannot rotate at the hub end when you're trying to true a wheel. And that is really, really useful. If you've ever tried to true a wheel with a normal straight pull spoke, you're having to hold onto it while making adjustments at the nipple end and that just avoids this completely. It won't surprise you to hear that these are very, very expensive wheels. These retail at £2,649.99 in the UK or $3,734 in the US. Next to a lightweight aluminium set of wheels, these are gonna have to work really hard to justify their cost but they are very cool and they are very light. This is Bontrager's new Rally Wave Cell helmet. Wave Cell is Bontrager's latest and greatest safety technology. It launched last year and we've seen it in some high-end helmets, but this is now available in the mid-range. This helmet retails at £129.99 or $149.99 US dollars versus about £200 for the Blaze helmet or $300. Wave Cell is the cellular structure that's found inside the helmet and the idea behind it is all about energy absorption in the event of a crash. According to Bontrager, there's a sequence of events that happens in the event of a crash. This cellular structure is designed to flex crumple and glide all in the interests of dissipating energy and reducing the force that your head and neck are subjected to when you fall off your bike. Apparently this helmet has earned a five-star rating in Virginia Tech's safety testing and in other respects it's just like a normal Bontrager Rally helmet. It's got boa adjustment on the rear, it's got an adjustable visor and this particular helmet, this is a size large, weighs 430 grams on my scales, which is not unreasonable. It's heavier than a helmet that doesn't have wave cell, but the weight penalty is not enormous. 
And now, over to Jack for a look at some new Garmin computers. Thank you very much, Matthew. We now go from deepest, darkest Forest of Dean to my trendy urbanite living room in fashionable South Bristol. And I'm here to talk you through two new Garmin Edge bike computers, the new Garmin Edge 1030 Plus and the Garmin Edge 130 Plus. Now these two computers were launched a couple weeks ago and they live at very different ends of the Garmin Edge range. So the new 130 Plus is now Garmin's cheapest bike computer and the 1030 Plus is, oh my word, it's most expensive. We'll start with the 130 Plus. Now, if you're familiar with the Garmin Edge range, this form factor will be very familiar because it is exactly the same externally as the 130. It's what's going on inside, which is the real meat of the changes with both of these computers. Now to start, the key thing with the 130 Plus is it now features an accelerometer. Now, among other things, this means you can now get mountain biking metrics, such as grit and flow, which rate respectively how hard your mountain bike ride was and how well you rode it. It also means you can get incident detection, so if you crash, this will detect it and it can alert a predefined list of contacts. So if you're a crash prone person, that's no bad thing. The new computer also features Climb Pro. Now Climb Pro is a bit of software which is inside Garmin computers, which can show you how long you have left on a climb, but also the profile of it. So it's really useful if you live in an area with longer climbs. This computer still only features as well a grayscale screen. Now it's a very, very good screen and it was one of the standout features of the original 130. However, with Climb Pro, it does mean you only get like a grayscale gradient of the climb. Whereas on color screen garments, you get kind of like a, like a color histogram, which shows you the steepness and gradient of the climb. One notable thing as well is the battery life of this computer has actually dropped from 15 hours down to a claimed 12 hours. Now, that might sound bad, but you must remember that 12 hours, I mean, how often are you riding for 12 hours? And this is an absolutely tiny computer. And it's also pretty damn cheap. Now, 170 pounds is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but for a pretty fully featured computer, this is pretty damn good. Now this, the 1030 Plus, it could be a small phone from 2004, but no, it is now Garmin's most feature rich computer. Now again, this looks almost exactly the same as the original 1030, though it now comes in a lovely black casing. And compared to that computer, there's actually some genuinely interesting updates. Now, just like the original 1030, this computer will do more than you will ever know what to do with. I mean, really, the amount of customization and training metrics you can get on this is frankly ridiculous. So in terms of actual day-to-day -day stuff you're gonna care about with this new computer, the three key things are a new faster processor, increased battery life, and massively increased internal storage. Now starting with that last one on the internal storage, the original 1030 had an SD card slot, which was good and it means you could expand storage as much as you really needed, but it was also prone to quite a lot of problems. So to get around that, Garmin has increased the storage on this to 32 gigabytes. With that, the new computer will also ship with two different territories. So for example, if I was buying this computer in the UK, I would also get North American mapping. If I was buying it in Australia, I'd also get Asian mapping. So that's a good thing to see straight out of the box. Now onto the processor. This uses the same processor, which is seen in the Garmin Edge 830. This is supposed to be twice as fast as the original 1030, and I have been using this quite a bit, and even just fiddling around, it is, it is noticeably quicker. Now the key thing with that is that with mapping, if you go off route, this can auto reroute you and it is much, much quicker. Again, more testing is required, but first impressions are pretty good. And finally onto the battery life, this has a whopping 24 hour battery life. So literally double what you're getting with the 130 plus. If you run this in its most basic mode as well, you can actually extend the battery life to 48 hours. That is mad. But for the likes of, you know, your transcontinental racers, it could make a more appealing option. There's so much tech packed into this tiny little computer. So check the link in the video description. We have the full details for both of these computers on bikeradar.com. I'm going to hand over to my handsome colleague, Matthew, who's going to talk you through the rest of the delightful swag in this week's show. 
thanks, Jack. You're the best. And now our final item, the Guardi double-ended inner tube. Now I should hasten to add, this is not a new product. These have been around for a few years, but we only discovered them recently at Bike Radar, and we thought this was too fun not to share. Essentially, this is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a double-ended inner tube that allows you to fix a puncture without removing a wheel from your bike. That might sound like a stupid idea. However, if you've got a bike with a rear hub gear or say an e-bike that has an in-wheel motor system, it may be that this is a lifesaver in the event of a puncture. I'm gonna try and demonstrate this. Here's the inner tube. Let's get that out. That is a Schroeder valve, but they're available with all the valve types. Just put a bit of air in that so we can see what it looks like. There you go, double-ended inner tube. Right, I wanted to demonstrate this on a bicycle, uh, but I realized that, of course, to install this without taking the wheel out, you would actually have to cut out the old inner tube. And seeing as I'm gonna do this using my wife's folding bike, I didn't think she'd be terribly pleased if I did that. So instead, I have actually taken the wheel out. This is a 20-inch wheel, 20-inch tube. So, in theory, it's like inserting any other tube at this point, seeing as I've got the wheel out. So you can feel there where the join is between the tubes. Let's see if that's just evident when I've pumped it up. Huh. There we go. The, uh... okay, I've made the valve a bit wonky, but um, I mean, that feels absolutely fine. That just feels like I've got a normal tube in there. You can, Oh, that's funny. You can detect there's a slight bump in the tire just there. I can't imagine you'd be able to feel that when you're riding. Whether or not you'd want it to be like that forever is another matter. There you go. Back to the studio. So there you have it. Stupid idea? I don't think so. I think it's pretty clever. Prices for these tubes vary, but they start around eight pounds, $10, or thereabouts. They're available in all different wheel sizes, different valve types. Uh, so if you've got a bike that falls into that category, or you think this might be helpful as an emergency backup measure, maybe give them a go. Thanks very much for watching our Tech of the Month. I've been Matthew Loveridge. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please hit that little bell icon so that you get notified about all of our new videos.